Hi, good morning students. Today, let me discuss about the classification of amino acids. You know, what are amino acids? Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Or in other words, amino acids are the monomers which forms the protein which are the polymers. Okay. Okay. Now, before going to the classification of amino acid, let us now look at the general structure of an amino acid. Here you can see an amino acid has four different groups attached to a central alpha carbon. You can see here, these are the four groups, amino group, carboxylic acid group, hydrogen atom and a side chain called as R and this R group is the one which differs in different amino acids. All the amino acids have these three groups in common that is an amino group, carboxylic acid group and hydrogen atom. So what is this alpha carbon? See alpha carbon in organic compound refers to the first carbon to which a functional group is linked. Here this carbon is linked to two functional group you can see an amino group as well as a carboxylic acid group right and hence this uh, groups are called as alpha amino group, alpha carboxyl group and alpha hydrogen atom okay and because this carbon alpha carbon is linked to four different groups it has a asymmetric center so all amino acids have at least one asymmetric center and depending on the group that is present on the side chain the number of asymmetric uh, carbon atoms might vary but this alpha carbon is an asymmetric carbon or a chiral carbon in all the amino acids except for the amino acid glycine so glycine do not have a chiral carbon atom so when you look at the structure of glycine you will understand why it is not asymmetric so what do you mean by asymmetric carbon atom asymmetric carbon or a chiral carbon refers to the carbon which is linked to four different groups or different atoms okay as i told you Glycine is the only amino acid which lacks a chiral carbon atom or which do not contain an asymmetric carbon. This is because here you can see these are the three groups that is common to an amino acid structure, right? Which are the amino group, carboxylic acid group and a hydrogen atom. And the fourth group is the side chain, right? In glycine, the side chain is also a hydrogen atom which means to say there are two groups that are common it has two hydrogen atoms because of which this is not a chiral carbon atom so glycine is the only amino acid which do not contain an asymmetric carbon or a chiral carbon because it has two hydrogens attached to the alpha carbon okay so now you know in the general structure of an amino acid has an asymmetric center or a chiral carbon atom because of the presence of one chiral carbon atom an amino acid can have its isomers right so these are the two isomers you can see here an alpha carbon with a carboxylic acid group amino group and a hydrogen atom with a side chain and its mirror image is this one where the amino group is present on the left side isn't it so how do we designate these amino acids as by taking glyceraldehyde as the standard compound these amino acids the isomers are designated as d amino acid and the l amino acids and we call them as enantiomers so these two isomers are the enantiomeric form so how do you define these enantiomers Enantiomers are the non-superimposable mirror images. Enantiomers are the isomers which are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. Okay, let me explain you this enantiomers. So, glyceraldehyde structure, if you remember, it has a hydroxyl group, right? And now, 
if the hydroxyl group is linked to the right side of this alpha carbon we call it as a d-glyceraldehyde and similarly its mirror image where the hydroxyl group present on the left side we call it as a l-glyceraldehyde isn't it similarly by taking this as the standard compound in amino acids we considered the group amino group here if the amino group is present on the right side or on our right side or if it resembles the d-glyceraldehyde then it is the D amino acid and similarly its mirror image where the amino group is present on the left side or if it resembles the L glyceraldehyde form we call it as a L amino acid so let me repeat these are the two isomeric form of the amino acid which are the D amino acid and L amino acid and we call them as enantiomers. So how do you define enantiomers? Enantiomers are the non-superimposable mirror images of each other. So which means they are mirror images but you cannot superimpose them on one another. Okay. So that is why they are called non-superimposable mirror images. So now you know Amino acids can exist in two isomeric form that is D and L amino acid. It is only the L amino acids that are found in the proteins formed biologically or it is the L form of amino acid that is present at the physiological pH 7.4. Okay, it is not the D amino acid. Of course, D amino acid is present, but very few in microorganisms. But L amino acids are more predominant in all the proteins. And coming to the properties of amino acids, it is dependent on the side chain present on them. The properties of amino acids are determined by the composition or the R groups present on each of them because R group is the one that differs in the amino acid. Accordingly, the property of each amino acid is dependent on the side chain or the R group. So now you know about the amino acids. So what are amino acids? Its general structure then uh, the isomeric form enantiomers definition isn't it now let's move on to the classification of amino acids amino acids can be classified based on many different uh, parameters but here the classification what we are going to study now is the classification of amino acid based on its polarity so based on the polarity Amino acids are broadly classified into two groups as non-polar amino acids and polar amino acids. Again, in polar amino acids, you have uh, neutral amino acids and charged amino acids. Or here you can say polar but neutral, polar and charged amino acids. Okay. So, let me repeat. Amino acids are classified based on the polarity as non-polar amino acids and polar amino acids. In polar amino acids, we find polar but neutral amino acids and polar and charged amino acids also. Okay. Now we will see the structure of the non-polar amino acids. There are eight amino acids in this group. That is, there are eight amino acids with the non-polar side chains. Here, these three, glycine, alanine, proline, these are the structure of these three amino acids. They have a small non-polar side chain. Okay, now if you look at the structure of glycine, you have three groups that is common, right, to the alpha carbon. So, this is the alpha carbon, an amino group, carboxylic group and hydrogen atom. So, these three groups are common. Now, the side chain is hydrogen atom, which is a small side chain, right? And coming to the alanine again, alanine also has the three groups in common, amino group, carboxyl group and the hydrogen linked to the alpha carbon, isn't it? And the side chain here is a methyl group, okay? Then proline, Again, proline has a CH, COOH, NH3. Here you can see 
instead of nh3 it is nh2 that is present so what has happened here is one of the hydrogen atom of the amino group of this amino acid is involved in the ring formation this is actually called as amino group okay so the only amino acid which has an amino group is the proline fine so these are the three non polar side chains which are small and weakly hydrophobic and here you can see glycine has a three letter symbol that is gly that is the first three letters have to be taken and for its single letter it is g so single letter g refers to glycine and gly three letter symbol similarly for alanine you have ala as a three letter symbol and capital a for a single letter symbol then for proline it is pro and for single letter it is capital p fine so here we looked at the structure of the non polar amino acids how to fetch this three or the non polar amino acids having a small non polar side chains and hence they are weakly hydrophobic okay so continuing with the non polar amino acids there are five more added to this group phenylalanine valine leucine isoleucine and methionine all of them have a hydrocarbon side chain which is hydrophobic hence they are all non polar amino acids now for the three letter and single letter codon if you look at three letter codon is very easy for you to remember because it is the first three letters you have to take up that is phe val for valine leu for leucine ile for isoleucine and for methionine it is met coming to the single letter codon the rest all have the first letter only that is v for valine l for leucine i for isoleucine m for methionine whereas phenylalanine it is different here you see because the first letter cannot be taken here because it is already assigned to the proline so proline has a single letter code that is p if you remember so for phenylalanine its pronunciation it is fa right phenylalanine so it sounds fa hence f is the single letter code given to this amino acid phenylalanine now look at the structure of these amino acids all of them have a very long hydrophobic side chain so here for the phenylalanine it has a methyl group just like how it is present in alanine this methyl group is linked to the benzene ring hence the name phenylalanine then coming to the valine valine has a branched side chain that is ch ch3 ch3 then leucine is also one of the branched side chain and it is strongly hydrophobic isoleucine and leucine they have a similar groups in their side chain but the only difference is their arrangement hence these two are examples for the structural isomers that is leucine and isoleucine but both of them occur naturally then methionine again it has a long side chain which is hydrophobic but here it has a sulfur present in its side chain so there are two amino acids which have sulfur in their side chain one of which is methionine okay so all these have a long non polar side chain hence they are all strongly hydrophobic so in the case of this non polar amino acids there are eight amino acids now if you count glycine alanine proline phenylalanine valine leucine isoleucine and methionine out of which glycine is the simplest amino acid because its side chain is very small it has only hydrogen in it then alanine has ch3 and proline has a amino group because its hydrogen is the amino alpha amino group hydrogen is involved in the ring formation has it has a amino group whereas this phenylalanine valine leucine isoleucine and methionine they all have a long non polar side chain and hence they are all strongly hydrophobic 
so so far you learnt about the classification of amino acids which are broadly classified into non polar and polar amino acids in this non polar group we have eight amino acids as glycine alanine proline phenylalanine valine leucine isoleucine and methionine now let's move on to this polar amino acids or the amino acids with the polar side chains so in this again you have two different groups as neutral and charged amino acids so let us move on to this polar amino acids now let us look at the next group of amino acids that is polar side chains in polar again you know there are two groups as neutral or uncharged and charged amino acids here in the group of polar uncharged side chain amino acid there are eight amino acids they are serine threonine asparagine glutamine histidine tryptophan cysteine and tyrosine now let us look at each one of those structures so these two amino acids that is serine and threonine they belong to the group of polar uncharged amino acids and they have hydroxyl group in their side chain so this is the structure of serine and uh, threonine the serine has ch2oh in the side chain whereas threonine has choh ch3 so both of them have a hydroxyl group in them so these two are polar but uncharged amino acids and as usual the three letter code for this amino acid is ser for serine thr for threonine and capital s for serine single letter code and t is for the threonine two other amino acids which have amide groups in them they are asparagine and glutamine again these two amino acids belong to the group of polar but uncharged amino acids the three letter code is asn for asparagine and glutamine has gln whereas for asparagine the single letter code given is n and glutamine has q as a single letter code so here you have to remember that q is for glutamine because g cannot be given because it is already given to the glycine and n the sound of glutamine n cannot be given because asparagine has got n hence here q is the letter given to glutamine now if you look at the structure both of them have amide group in them that is co n h2 asparagine has ch2 co n h2 whereas glutamine has ch2 ch2 co n h2 there are two other amino acids that is histidine and tryptophan which have a aromatic amine side chains in them so here if you see histidine has a imidazole ring in it a heterocyclic compound a imidazole ring with two nitrogen atoms present linked to the alanine an alanine group linked to an imidazole ring is the histidine side chain whereas for the tryptophan it is the same imidazole ring is linked to a benzene so this is called as indole ring okay so tryptophan is the amino acid which has an indole ring and imidazole ring is present in the histidine amino acid and uh, coming to its three letter code uh, his is for histidine trp is for tryptophan h is the single letter code for histidine and w is for tryptophan the two other amino acid belongs to the group of polar uncharged amino acids are cysteine and tyrosine the cysteine has a sulfhydryl group present in it this is another amino acid containing a sulfur in it as i told you earlier there are two amino acids containing sulfur one was methionine and the other one is cysteine and tyrosine has a hydroxyphenyl alanine present in it so you know phenylalanine structure uh, alanine alanine group has a, a methyl group linked to a benzene ring now here the same phenylalanine structure having a hydroxyl group at the fourth position that is what is the structure of tyrosine so tyrosine has a hydroxyphenyl alanine structure in its side chain 
so this was about the second group of amino acid that is polar uncharged side chain which contains eight amino acids in them as serine threonine asparagine glutamine histidine tryptophan cysteine and tyrosine now let's move on to the second group of uh, the same amino acids that is polar but charged amino acids okay now coming to the polar but charged amino acids are the amino acids which have a polar charged side chains there are four amino acids belonged into this group which have charged side chains aspartic acid and glutamic acid which have a an extra carboxylic group in the side chain and that is why they are negatively charged aspartic acid has a three letter code as asp and a single letter code is d here and glutamic acid has glu as a three letter code and e is the single letter code so ch2coh is the side chain present in aspartic acid whereas ch2 ch2coh is the side chain present in the glutamic acid the two more amino acids belonging to the charged side chains are arginine and lysine arginine has arg has a three letter code and r has a single letter code lys is the three letter code for lysine and k is the single letter code so if you look at the structure both of them have nh2 in their side chain so an extra amino group is present and that is why they are basic and gives a positively charged amino acid so these two are the positively charged amino acids whereas aspartic acid and glutamic acid because they have a carboxylic acid in the side chain they are negatively charged so these four amino acid that is glutamic acid aspartic acid arginine and lysine so these four belong to the polar charged amino acids so so far we have discussed about the classification of amino acid based on the polarity and there are 20 amino acids both belonging to the polar and the non polar side chains so there is two more amino acids added to this group that is the 21st and the 22nd amino acids which are also the standard amino acid the 21st amino acid which is proteinogenic amino acid so proteinogenic amino acids means these are the amino acids involved in formation of the protein that is selenocystein selenocystein has a three letter code sec and a single letter code is u so selenocystein is the 21st proteinogenic amino acid and this is a cysteine analog so cysteine analog this is because it has a similar structure of cysteine but in place of sulfur it has selenium that is present so that is why we call it as a cysteine analog but it is also a standard amino acid and this was discovered by a biochemist theresa stadman in 1958 but one peculiar thing about this amino acid selenocystin is it is encoded by uga codon where so far we have thought uga codon as a stop codon but uga codon though it is a stop codon is utilized by the selenocystin for its coding so this uga codon is encoded i mean it is made to encode the selenocystin when there is another uh, sequence that is present called as selenocystin insertion sequence if this sequence is present in the mrna then uga though being a stop codon can encode the selenocystin and form the protein this uh, amino acid is present in uh, majority of the enzymes like glutathione peroxidase contains selenocystin then tetraiodothyronine diiodinase uh, thioredoxin reductase formate dehydrogenase and many other enzymes they all have this selenocystin present in so the 22nd proteinogenic amino acid is pyrrolysin which was discovered in 2002 has a three letter code pyl and a single letter code o 
This is also a naturally occurring proteinogenic amino acid, but so far it is found in some methanogenic archaea, which are single cellular microorganism, and this is encoded by the UAG codon. So here is the structure of pyrrolysin. So this is about the classification of amino acid that is polar and non-polar amino acids. In other words, you can call it as hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids. The hydrophobic amino acids, because they have a hydrocarbon side chain, they tend to repel the aqueous environment and therefore they are predominantly present in the interior of the protein structure. Whereas the hydrophilic amino acids, because they can interact with the water forming hydrogen bonds, they are present on the surface of protein and hence are responsible for the solubility of the proteins.